Today, I want to explain to you the absolute best start you can possibly get in Rise of Kingdoms. This uses a method called the sleeper method, and it's better than anything else out there. It's even better than the jumper method, which used to be the tried and true gold standard. So stick around in this video for everything you need to know to get literally days worth of head start over other players in the same kingdom as you in Rise of Kingdoms. Man, stick around for the absolute best possible start in the game. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskul Gaming, and if you're new to my channel, I have been playing Rise of Kingdoms for over 1,750 days. I've made over 2,200 videos about Rise of Kingdoms specifically, and my jumper guides are some of my most popular guides, helping you get incredible value and the best possible start in Rise of Kingdoms. But there's a new method in town, and this method is so much better then the old way of doing things, it's actually shocking. And before I explain this method, I've got to give credit to Rushi from Kingdom 3247. He's in the Alliance Iconic Legends, and they literally just completed this sleeper process. So the information I'm about to share with you is extremely current. We know that it works, and it doesn't get any more current than this, okay? And if you're interested in joining the Iconic Legends, I'll mention their kingdom later in the video, but there's a link to their... Uh, Discord server in the description of this one. Thank you again, Rashi, for explaining the literal latest and greatest methods and techniques for a sleeper group. So the first thing I want to do in this video is explain how it is you get early game advantage. Like, what's the big picture goal here? How the heck do you get days worth of edge over other players? Then I'll talk about the old gold standard. This is the jumper method. And from there, I will give you the new hotness called the sleeper method. Now, if you want to jump to any one part of the video, consider using the timestamps that are in the description. So your goal with creating a new account is going to be a very um, unusual thing. I, I honestly don't even know why the game allows it, but, but it does. And you can literally get days worth of extra playtime over other people that are in the same kingdom as you. Let me explain that again, because this is insane. I am telling you, that the methods I will show you in this video give you literally days of extra age on your account over other people that start fresh in the same kingdom as you. Basically, if you don't use one of these methods, like you're you're playing the game suboptimally in your start, and if hey, if you if you just fired up the game and made an account and you got going and you're having a good time, I'm not it's not a criticism of how you played the game. I'm saying when you know these things, it's really crazy how much edge you can get. So let me explain to you the first original way of getting this advantage, okay? And the first way that you used to take advantage of this, and it was the gold standard, is called the jumper account. Now, the jumper account abuses an item that is really kind of designed to help you play with your friends. It's called a beginner's teleport. The intention of the beginner's teleport is that if you start playing in one kingdom and your friend is playing in another kingdom and they start at about the same time as you, but didn't realize they were like in a different kingdom from you, you use your beginner's teleport to be able to play with your friends. Well, hey, we're gamers over here and gamers like to play with the rules. We like to bend and break the rules where we can and push the boundaries of what can be done. So if you're on board for the idea that an older account in this game just gets value for free over time, I mean, it's literally like days worth of free speed ups compared to other people in the same kingdom as you. Um, if you're on board for that, then what you want to do is push the boundaries on what this beginner's teleport lets you do. And the beginner's teleport lets you migrate kingdoms and it lets you change only to kingdoms that are up to 10 days old. I want you to understand this. So you can only go backwards with a beginner's teleport. Um, if your account is less than 10 days old, after that, it's going to disappear. And you can only go back to one of these kingdoms um, that, that is younger than yours. I think you can only go younger. Maybe, maybe you can go older, but it doesn't really matter. The whole point is that you basically let your account live for almost 10 days get 10 days worth of value doing events and playing the game. And then you go back to a brand new kingdom. So compared to the accounts that are in this brand new kingdom, it's like your account is 10 days older, man. You got all this free 
time and stuff and rewards compared to brand new accounts. But there are downsides. Now, when you use the beginner's teleport, your city hall can't be over level seven. So you will find after the first couple days, your progress basically has to stop to abuse this item. You can still go level up your commanders and battle barbarians and collect tokens that, that have, you know, resources and speed ups and so on. Um, but your progress has to stop for account growth at that city hall level seven amount. You have to drain the overwhelming majority of your open resources in order to actually use this beginner's teleport. And then you jump back. So there are some clear downsides to using this jumper process, and there's a new downside that showed up in the last, I want to say, half year, which is that they are now limiting the number of people can eat that can even use a, a beginner's teleport to a kingdom. So kingdoms, I think, have a hidden secret limit of 500 people that can use a beginner's teleport. And you may be thinking, <laughs> just go 500 people. That's a huge number. Is that actually a problem? Yeah. Actually, it's a huge problem because the meta in this game, if you really, hey, we gamers over here, you want a game, you get a thousand, two thousand people and you make a kingdom together. And that's what people were doing. They were making absolutely massive groups all jumping together. And the developers were like, uh, that's a little aggressive that you could still do it with 500 people. And technically, you might want to play it safe and do less than 500 because it sure would suck to be like, number 501 because some random person not a part of your group does a beginner teleport to the kingdom you see what i'm saying so the downsides of a jumper group is that you can't actually power up you might get locked out of your desired kingdom and have to pivot to a different kingdom um and you also really want to be online when people uh when this new kingdom opens up so you don't miss the window of the 500 people that can use their beginner's teleport item OK, it's still really powerful as a method. And if you did this and a lot of people still do this today, you still get a huge amount of advantage from just three days played compared to someone who just starts fresh in your desired kingdom. But now we can talk about the new method. We got the context, baby, to talk about this brand new. Uh, it's not actually brand new. People have been doing this for some number of months now. Um, and this method is called a sleeper account. So I don't exactly know what, like where this name came from, uh, but the intention of a sleeper account is that you let your beginner's teleport item rot, and instead you use the same mechanism that all players use after their account is older to go between kingdoms, and you use what's called just a passport. You're going to migrate to a younger kingdom, and based on your power, the number of passports you need actually goes way up. But a passport page is actually very obtainable from a number of methods. First of all, hey, you want to just throw down five bucks? If you're less than 10 million power, you can go over here and for five bucks, you can buy one passport page. I wouldn't be able to show you this bundle, but I already bought it. Five bucks will buy you a, a single passport page and you'll have it to be able to migrate. If you're less than 10 million power, you're good to go. Uh, and most people that do this method will be less than 10 million power, okay? The other way you can get a passport page is from your alliance shop. The alliance shop is right over here. You would need an officer of your alliance to stock a passport page for you. I don't know why someone would want to do that to help you out. Your alliance credits are actually very limited and like you're leaving the kingdom. So like I wouldn't count on someone actually doing this for you, but if you farm up, I think it's 600,000 Alliance currency. You can get the passport page for free. So you can technically do this method free to play. Although again, you may not want to out yourself as someone who's going to leave your current kingdom because they may be like, hey, F you, you're leaving here. I'm going to zero you and take your resources because I mean, bro, you're literally abandoning them. So we'll talk about that downside of a sleeper account in a second. Let me explain the mechanics a little bit further. So the way that this works is you want to basically shed the limitation of, of not being able to grow your account, right? The big downside of a jumper is you can't go over City Hall level seven. Bro, you're gonna get capped on like your first two days of playing the game on your ability to really grow your account. So instead what you do is you migrate back using the one passport, we talked about how to get it, and you're basically gonna take your account to 20 days of age. So you'll start in a kingdom, you'll get into to the point where your account is about 20 days old, your kingdom is about 20 days old, 
And once a kingdom is over 10 days of age, it will open up for migration using passports. So you can see here, this kingdom is nine days old. And what your method is going to be is called a same season migration. Okay. But kingdoms that are younger than 10 days are locked for this. You can't do that. You can't use a passport to go back to a kingdom that's younger than 10 days. Only those beginner's teleports are going to work. But once the kingdom is 10 days old, then same season migration opens up. And so you then become subject to the same season migration rules. So what are those same season migration rules? Well, for most kingdoms, your power has to be less than 25 million. Um, the current kingdom that you're in has to also be in this status over here. This is called the preparation season. And also your character's starting kingdom cannot be over 10 days older than the destination kingdom. So what does that mean? If your kingdom is 20 days old, you have to migrate to a kingdom that is um, between 20 and 10 days old. You can't go back to a younger kingdom than 10 days uh, younger than your, your starting kingdom. And this is an important uh, differentiation between the kingdom you started in and your current kingdom. And you see they call this out here, okay? Let me explain the difference. What I thought would have been a really cool idea is if you do a jumper account and then do a sleeper with it. You do both of them, but you can't do that because of this one constraint, which is that your character's starting kingdom um, cannot be over 10 days older than your destination kingdom. So um, your choices are going to be much more limited um, if you try to combine both of these methods. I really don't think there's a lot of value. And, and in a lot of ways, you really want to establish, uh, really establish yourself in your desired end kingdom as soon as possible, okay? Um, because uh, there's a number of reasons why that's the case, but, but let's keep going here, okay? So the other requirement that you subject yourself to is that your city hall needs to be level 16 or higher. So that's going to be very easy to do, in my opinion, um, because now you're basically going to play the first 20 days of a kingdom's life. You're going to power up pretty much as much as you want. You probably want to stay under 10 million power, but you definitely have to be under 25 million power. Now, why is it that you want to be under 10 million power? Two reasons. The first is that the passport cost is cheaper. That's nice, but you could always buy more passports if you wanted. The second reason is that your destination kingdom might become a star kingdom. So, Rushi who I mentioned earlier as the person I talked with, is in this kingdom, 3247, and they are now a star kingdom. A star kingdom is one of the most powerful kingdoms in its grouping, and you have to be less than 10 million power if you want to migrate to a star kingdom. So a part of the reason you might want to stay under 10 mil is not only is your passport cost cheaper, but if for some reason your kingdom flips over to being a star kingdom as one of the most powerful kingdoms that you want to, you know, potentially go to, if you go over this 10 million limit, you can't go there. So I think 10 mil is a very safe number that you want to stay under for migrating to a uh, kingdom and using this sleeper account process. So again, your method here as a sleeper account is that you're going to play your account for an upwards of 20 or so days, and then you're going to migrate backwards to a kingdom that is just over 10 days old. And remember, you're going to have to pick a kingdom that can, that is no more than 10 days younger than the kingdom you started in, okay? Um, and that is how you will use your sleeper account and get huge value. You're going to get a ton of things by doing this. And let me explain what those are. First of all, you're going to get double captures on a bunch of passes, I think, and holy sites, which is pretty cool. I think pass two might be a part of your reward series. And you'll do that not only the first time you play your, your way through, but also when you migrate back, you get to do them over again. So any passes and holy sites that, that would have been capturable, um, you get those rewards twice. Also, any chronicles in your kingdom, you'll get those rewards again too. And let me explain. You'll get a building in your city called the Monument, 
And when you migrate, you can reclaim all of the monument rewards, which is really wacky. Um, so you get extra uh, monument rewards because, you know, in a jumper account, you get 10 days worth of these Kingdom Chronicles. But in a sleeper account, you got 20 days worth of the Chronicles. Then you migrate back and you get all the Chronicles all over again which is pretty cool. So you get a slight advantage on the Chronicles as well. But the biggest advantage here is that you get to keep leveling up your city with almost no limit. I mean, 10 mil is, is the sort of soft limit and 25 mil is the hard limit. You definitely can't do it at over 25 million power, but that's not gonna be a problem unless you spend like crazy and just be careful if that's what you ultimately wanna do. And I will point out also that the nice thing about this is that when you migrate, you have to spend down your resources below your storehouse limit, okay? And the good news here is that because you're a sleeper, not a jumper, you have plenty of ways to spend your resources as you power up. I mean, in a worst case, you can do your hospitals that take a ton of resources and a low amount of time to do, and you'll gain a bunch of power. Just be careful about your power. But there's plenty of ways to spend down these resources so you can get, I think, just more value overall. The only thing that can go wrong, as far as I know, with a sleeper account process is a leadership breakdown in your alliance. If that were to happen, that would be pretty bad. Um, or if your current kingdom kind of finds out that you're a sleeper account, they may zero you for resources or give you a hard time or kick you out because you are in some ways sort of a traitor to your current kingdom. Like you're sort of just using them to power up and then you disappear, which is like kind of not cool, but it's also to be expected at this point. It's the standard. It's the best way to create a new account in the game. So again, to summarize, there's two methods you can use to make a new account that's super powerful in Rise of Kingdoms. The base way that you play the game is you just make your account and play. The way that you get 10 extra days of playtime but have limits to how much you can power up is using a jumper account. And the way that you get 10 days of extra playtime but have very little limitations to how much you power up is using the sleeper account. You use that method to basically play 20 days in and then migrate to a kingdom that's about 10 days old. Uh, and that method is, I think, the new gold standard. Of course, there's a lot of information you need about making your new account in Rise of Kingdoms, like what buildings should you power up? What commanders should you work on? Um, what's the best place to spend your gems and so on? Great news for you. I have a video that goes so in depth. In my opinion, it's like the gold standard for everything you need to know as a new player. Card will be in the end screen for that one in just a second.